I mean, it came right back in, went right back through because it never confirmed above that. So it's nice to see a little bounce on Bitcoin today. We're seeing an Ethereum bounce as well, but these are still in weak position. Hello, everyone. Gareth Soloway is surprised by the earnings reports and predicts key events in the near term for Bitcoin price action. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Traders have reportedly lost millions of dollars after the X account of soccer star Kylian Mbappe was hacked on August 29. Multiple reports indicate that the hacker used Mbappe's account to promote a fraudulent cryptocurrency token, promising to double any tokens sent to a specific address. The post caused the market cap of the so-called Killian Mbappe M -B -A -P -P -E, token to surge to $460 million before it plummeted to less than $100,000. One trader lost over $1 million on the fraudulent scheme. The unknown trader spent over $1 million worth of Solana tokens to buy the fake MBAPP token, according to a Lukanchin X post on August 29. Here's your NVIDIA chart, right? So this is after hours right here when earnings came out. Initially, the stock popped slightly because they beat on earnings and revenue. And remember, the algos are what read it first. They read it before any of us have the time to read it. We just can't read as fast as a computer. So you saw the initial pop, but then people started to say, wait a minute, the earnings numbers, they're good. In fact, they're very good, but the price of the stock is so high it can't justify that. And so the stock then started to crater to the downside and dump out. The stock market as well in the after hours really came down substantially. This was after hours till eight o'clock right here. And then at four in the morning, we started to trade. And you could see again, right away, it was up, floating back up, almost back to the break even, came within about $2 of break even. And now it's trailed off trading down a few more dollars than that. So again, we're down four bucks on the day, give or take. That's not a huge move. And I think the key is this, is why is the S&P 500 holding up? And if we look at the S&P 500 here, pre-market, this was yesterday after hours, you can see the dive in the market, and then the rally to the upside today, where we're net positive. And the reason, in my opinion, why the markets are not freaking out, number one, the earnings were still very, very good. So it's not telling us there's a major slowdown in the AI sector, in the chip sector, or the economy. And so I think the markets are saying, okay, at least it wasn't horrible. If NVIDIA had missed the numbers, forget about it. That would have been a huge collapse in the stock market. They beat on earnings. They beat on revenue. They just didn't do quite as well as the dreamers had hoped they would do. And so overall, the market's able to shrug this off. And the market's saying, okay, you know, they were good. They were, in fact, very good. But uh, it's down a little bit, not down a ton. So it's not crushing things and therefore the S&P 500 is neutral to positive. I think the other factor here is that we're now seeing a shift from everyone waiting for NVIDIA. Okay, NVIDIA's over, it wasn't horrendous. Now everyone's looking to the PCE data, which is the inflation data that the Fed pays the most attention to, and that will be out tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. I'll cover it right here on the game plan tomorrow. All right, so again, the general prognosis here is that PCE is going to be very good. It's going to enable the Fed to cut in September, and the markets are already looking forward to the Fed being lenient and cutting interest rates. Okay, so that's where we are on the S&P 500 pre-market. Now, we did get jobless claims out this morning. They weren't really a big deal today. Uh, expectations had been for 232,000 people filing for unemployment, which is basically pretty low in general historically, and we came in at 200. 131,000. So almost exactly in alignment. So it didn't really cause any sort of shift. We did see the S&P inch up initially on this candle and then just right back to where it was trading prior to that news. Okay, so we have a basis now. We know why the markets are trading neutral to positive today. We're not up a lot, but we are net positive even with Nvidia down, which again, as I said, a lot of people scratching their heads, but there's a lot of other big movers this morning we wanna cover. So I'm gonna get right into it. We're gonna go into charts here. So first and foremost, if we flip back to Nvidia and we just look at it, where could a level of support be? Okay, so number one, we can see these are the earnings numbers that I had and the whisper numbers. And by the way, just to go over this, so remember yesterday when I told you guys, so this was what 
earnings were expected to be, 65 cents a share. They came in at 68 cents a share, but the whisper number was 71 cents. And that's why the whisper number is actually very, very important is because this tells you really what the market is really expecting. Not what analysts have said for the last three months to expect, but what is as of today going into earnings what are they expecting? They were expecting 71 cents, came in at 68, therefore the stock is down. Now in terms of technical support, the first thing that I see, I see this pivot low down here and these lows over here, right to here. So the first thing for me that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw that trend line in. Let me erase these lines so that you guys can actually see me drawing this in. Um, if we take a trend line here and we essentially stretch it right through here, we get a major level. So what this tells me is you have this flat top right here right here, right? So we have this flat top right there, we have this under trend line right there, and they're both major supports. So listen, I don't expect Nvidia to come down to $96, $97 today, but what I'm saying is that if we do sell off in the coming days or weeks, this level is going to be a massive level of support on the stock. Now, if at any point that ever breaks, which I actually do think it'll break maybe late this year or next year, then that's where you get your next big leg to the downside. That would be a tremendous leg to the downside because it would be major multi-factor support that would be breaking on the charts. All right, next up, we had yesterday after hours, CRM announced earnings. This stock, again, had really poor earnings last quarter, so they came back with a strong quarter. The stock bouncing up. You could see, again, closing yesterday right around, looks like around 259, trading at 271 right now. There is a level that I'm watching for the day trading apex live day trading room today and again that's right around 278 to 280 to find that level we flip over to our daily chart and we zoom out and remember what we're looking for here when we're trading or investing and, and by the way investing if you're technically in technicals for investing are the same thing it's just a bigger time frame but the point being is you look for multiple trend lines or factors to coincide well we have a gap fill right here and that's at 279 we have an upsloping trend line right through here, right through here, right through these lows right here, and that's right around here. And then we also have this high pivot and this high pivot, and they all coexist right here around 278 to 280. So for me, as a technician, I see, okay, it's trading around 272, 271. If it pushes up during market hours in the first, let's say, 30 minutes of the day, runs into that level, I might be able to get a quick trade on the short side, rejecting it to the downside. Now, again, only a day trade for me. This isn't going to be a swing trade short, but nonetheless, that is an interesting level for me on CRM. Let's take a look at Bitcoin here. Bitcoin is getting a nice little bounce. We're back above 60,000. But remember, the level to watch is basically 61,500. So that's your pivot line here. And again, what we're watching again to see is can price attack this line, this pivot line again, and can it get above that? If it does get above it, just like it was above here, it must confirm, taught in the winning trader series, otherwise it's a suspect of a breakout. It's, it's, it's not a firm, high percentage chance that it's a real breakout. In fact, it oftentimes favors a fake out until it confirms. That's what we saw here, right? I mean, it came right back in, went right back through because it never confirmed above that. So it's nice to see a little bounce on Bitcoin today. We're seeing an Ethereum bounce as well, but these are still in weak position. So if you, if you just literally look at the charts and you say, okay, well, what's the bias here? Well, the bias is negative right now because we're below the pivot line. So as long as you're below the pivot line, it favors a slight advantage to a move down like this. If we can recapture the pivot and confirm, it then comes and favors an up move like that to about the $69,000 level. Let's flip over to oil here real quick. And we see oil is bouncing a little bit today. So I'm still short my oil, still in the money. We shorted right up here. But again, upticking here. I expect it to ultimately roll over and come back in um, and ultimately even break this to the downside here. So we should see further downside on oil in the coming weeks. I do think it does need a little bit of that weaker economic data to really send it through this level of support, but I do expect that to come in the coming weeks that I do think the data will continue to be weak. And as I said in the past few game plans, um, I do think that the Fed is sending that message. A lot of people are ignoring it in the stock market, but the Fed, the fact that they wanted to cut in July or many 
of them did want to cut. The fact that Jerome Powell has been so dovish and saying, hey, cuts are coming, this is the time, da da da. You know, he's basically choreographing that they're seeing data on their side that that's not available to us as the public that is telling us that the economy is weakening faster and faster. All right, next up, let's take a look here at uh, gold today. And gold just continues to hold steady uh, right up into this range. We're still hovering here. You could look at this and say it is a little bit of consolidation, maybe bullish consolidation. Again, my big concern, and I brought this up yesterday to you guys, is that you do, and I, I don't have it up, maybe I'll put show it tomorrow, but there's a negative divergence on the RSI. That just gives me pause. I'm saying, okay, yeah, you know, I guess, you know, negative divergences, you could always have one more move up, but also at the same time, it just is a pause. It makes you say, maybe I don't want to go long here. Let's, let's, let's see what happens. Um, and take it day by day. And so that's what I'm really doing with gold here. I do have a little bit of position still in silver. Um, I still have a little bit of platinum palladium positioning. But for the most part, I took my profits on our gold trade in our commodity service right up here on that $2,500 pierce. And I'm just patiently waiting to see if we get a little flush here, here, or even lower. Um, and again, still net long-term bullish, still have my long-term holdings in gold, just not the swing trade side at this point. All right, quickly looking at silver here. And if we look at silver, silver small bounce, really small bounce today. It's losing some of its gains already. Um, again, it looks like it's stalling out. I really had it penciled in to go right up here, and it hasn't achieved that yet. It shows you that even the best analysis sometimes can be a little bit off, or maybe it eventually is just consolidating and it will have another move up. We don't know yet. That's the key. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, Please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.